is, I don't know if, if this has ever taken place before. We get a chance to work with an expert commentator who has faced both of the two fighters in the ring within the past year. So, Roy, let's break down the fight in five different categories, and you give us an idea as to which of these two fighters holds the edge in each, starting with speed. I would speed because Johnson moves a lot, he moves his head a lot, he moves his hands a lot. You would probably, you know, lean towards him as far as speed goes because he's always in motion. He's never still. He's always constantly got something going on. So I think I'd give Johnson the speed edge. Which he'll need because he probably has to be the attacker in the fight. How about the jab? Who has the edge there? With the jab, Tarp is a taller fighter and he definitely uses his right jab very well. So with him coming forward all the time and Johnson being 5'10", it's probably going to be more like him to have the advantage with the jab. So as far as the jab category goes, I give that to Tarp. They both have to defend themselves. Who has the edge in that category? Defense, I think both fighters are pretty much strong in that department because they're blooming at a late age. They've been very careful along their way, so I think that's probably equal. All right, moving forward to power. Who has the edge here? Uh, with the power edge, I would no doubt give that to Tarva because it's just him and the way he fights. He stands still more. He throws a lot of power shots, so I definitely give the edge to Tarva much more often a flat-footed fighter and finally let's talk about emotional resiliency mental strength the intangibles who has the edge here mental strength because of what Grant Johnson has been through uh, fighting such good fighters in the past as a Bernard Hopkins etc early in his career not getting the wins having so many chances and finally getting his chance I think that goes to Johnson Roy, you were the ultimate collector of belts, yet the big business story of this fight is that both fighters agreed to be stripped of their light heavyweight title belts for the opportunity to fight each other for by far the most money. Right thing to do or wrong thing to do? Uh, to me, that would be the right thing to do for these guys. First of all, they're both in, the mid, in their mid-30s, which is just about the end of your boxing career. Secondly, you know, I was able to go up and do what I wanted to do in my prime. I had time to go get belts and do whatever I wanted to do. These guys are just now starting to come to the top of the game at the end of my career, so they need to get as much money as they can because their careers are just about over. For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world with dedication to the men and women serving in the armed forces of the United States, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, official weight, 174 and one quarter pounds. Professional record, 41 victories, including 28 knockouts, nine defeats and two bouts even. From Miami, Florida, the relinquished IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, the road warrior, Glenn Johnson. <laughs> and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing teal with black and white, official weight, 175 pounds, professional record, 22 victories, including 18 knockouts with only two defeats. From Orlando, Florida, he is the relinquished WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, Antonio Magic Man Torv! Yes, sir. One second. And one fighter. One second, one fighter. Let's go. Come on out, fellas. There's the line right there. There's the line right there. It's for the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Touch up your gloves. Let's have a good fight. Good luck. I'm not sure what the IBO is, <laughs> but the Ring Magazine belt may not be official. But it is the most legitimate belt at stake here tonight. Just a few moments ago, one of the men in Antonio Tarver's corner threw souvenir caps with Tarver's new teal coloring into the stands or into the uh, bleachers and one of them fell into the lap of a ringside spectator named Mike Tyson. He's already got a cap on his head. 
So round one begins, and uh, Johnson comes across the ring aggressively and begins delivering jabs and body punches. And this is not dissimilar to what he attempted to do and got away with in the first round against you, Roy. Yeah, this is the smartest fight for him because he's a shorter guy. He don't want to come out and deal with Antonio's jab. He want to come out and get in and make stuff happen right away. Tarver, for his part, said, if Glenn Johnson runs across the ring and tries to jump on me, I'll counter him and get an early knockout. Well, Johnson's had 52 fights. He was victimized on 11th round TKO by Hopkins, but he's never been knocked out, and he's getting the better of Antonio Tarver in the early going with sheer aggression, the same kind of aggression he showed against you. Tarver appears just to be trying to measure what Johnson is doing get an idea about his rhythm, his speed, before he unleashes his answers. Already Glenn Johnson has thrown 43 punches. We're barely halfway through the round. He's right on pace to do what he did in the first round against Roy Jones when he threw a total of 84 punches. Now Tarver gets him back to the middle of the ring and begins to extend his jab a little bit. I wonder when Tarver might start trying to beat Johnson to the punch. Well, he's not going to beat him to the punch because he covers up when uh, Johnson punches at him. So he's not trying to beat him to the punch. So he's going to the elite defense when Johnson punches at him. Do you think his biggest interest in this first round is to allow some of Johnson's energy to dissipate? Yeah, and try to find an opportunity between Johnson's punches to hit him. Now Johnson begins to be a little bit more careful. Johnson banging hard to Tarver's right arm. You're fighting a more powerful fighter, and as Roy Jones pointed out, Tarver has the edge in power. It's good to go to the body early, and Glenn Johnson has been disciplined about that. Notice also how Johnson has his right hand practically glued to his forehead when he's not throwing it. Tarver coming down over the top with a chopping left hand. Throws that left from a variety of different angles. Stop the bell. Styles make fights. This is a different looking equation than we've seen for either Glenn Johnson or Antonio Tarver before. And round one is somewhat inconclusive. Give me the bucket. Beautiful work, Chandler. Nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. Put the bucket down. You put it down. Put it down. All right. Spit over to your side. Over here, Glenn. You're going to spit over to the left. You don't go work, baby. Listen. You got to keep up that pace. That's all you got to do with this guy. Use your face. Listen to me, Glenn. Use your face. Just like you're doing. Don't stop that movement that you're doing. That keeps him off. All right? When he gets in... Shoot the left hand downstairs. Okay. Touch him downstairs with the jab. Okay? Okay, okay baby? He's trying, to, he's trying to get your respect. Right, but what we're going to do here is you're going to stay smart and do what that tone on top of those best. What we're going to do when you go to the rope? Stay low. He see Glenn Johnson on the attack, going to the body, then coming up with a boom, good left hook right there to the head of Tarver. And he got that because he was landing a beautiful body shot a little earlier. But Johnson no notably shifted gears in the last minute of the round after throwing so many punches in the first minute and a half. He threw only a handful of punches in the last minute of the round. Maybe trying to conserve some energy for later on. Yeah, he better because Tarver just sitting there con conserving all of his energy and hoping that he won't have to run out of energy and he'll have plenty left toward the end of the fight. Johnson hit Tarver with a clean right hand. Antonio moves back looking for punching room. Tarver wants to extend his long arms. Johnson wants to get up in Tarver's chest and prevent that. Yeah, Tarver always wants to mainly counter. He's not looking to do much when the guy's coming after him. He wants to go take one punch at him and he wants to counter that one shot. Tarver has landed some good, clean shots now. He's landed Watch two or head. three Don't to the head, head, one or two to the body, and is looking to throw his right hook a little bit more because of the way Johnson is covering up for the left. Tarver uppercutting with the left as Johnson moves in. He does it again there. Combination by Tarver there.
And he mixed in the left uppercut. Leads with a left uppercut there and follows with a straight left hand. Antonio Tarver starting to get much more active here in the second round. They gotta get his hands busy or else he's gonna get behind the fight. Johnson still stalking, but not throwing nearly as much, and Tarver hits him with two left hands. Johnson might be out of gas and throw some of the punches in that first round. Suddenly Tarver's fighting at a somewhat faster pace than we're accustomed to seeing from him. Right, one step, all the way back. Antonio going low and looking to hit Johnson in the body. Johnson fires a hard right hand to the body, but one punch at a time for Glenn, which isn't really his style. No, he slowed his punch output now for some, for some strange reason. Now he takes advantage of Tarver's immobility to fire some shots to the body, and Antonio counters him upstairs and lands another clean left hand. Johnson with a good left hand to the body. Uppercut lands for Johnson and a quick left hook. Straight left hand from Tarver moves Johnson. Both fighters have had some moments here in the second round, and while the crowd booed a little bit in the closing stages of the first round, they won't boo this. The fight is breaking out. Stop the bell. <laughs> round two ends with a hard Glenn Johnson right hand to Tarver's ribcage. That's the next Real Sports, Tuesday, December 28, Among the Stories, an inspiring look at Kyle Maynard, a former high school wrestler who competed despite having been born without arms and legs. All right? You got to get a little bit busy on him. Don't let him get off so much. Don't let him get off so much, all right? Get a little bit busy. You catch your breath. You got this. Just stay on it. He's starting to fade. All right? You notice his punches are getting a little bit weaker. All right? But don't let him get off. I'm working now, okay? Stay small. Just Stay small. Out, Stay out. small and go to the body. Don't worry about turning right handed yet. Let's break him down to the body. Okay? Nice relax. It's relax. your night, okay? Okay. Nice relax. Just keep that jab going and stay low and work the body. Okay. Don't worry about the head yet. All right, baby? Here's a look at Mike Tyson. Seated in row two at ringside. He's right behind Kobe and Vanessa Bryant. You may have heard of them. And the uh, souvenir Tarver cap was given to the gentleman who sits next to Mike. So, in uh, round two, Copybox found Tarver landing 31 out of 68, and Johnson 21 out of 64. Uh, power connects the edge, definitely to Antonio Tarver there in the second round. Glenn Johnson tries to get started again in round three, and catches Tarver with the left hook. If Johnson can take the best punches of Tarver as he has so far, this is going to be a long, tough fight. And I think it's going to be a pretty good, tough fight because I think he can take a lot of them. Tarver has to catch him by surprise to drop him. What do you think of Tarver's chin, and can Johnson threaten it? Yeah, Johnson can threaten it if he wears him down. I don't think Tarver really has the best chin, but it never gets tested because he has such a superb defense. Tarver three times through the body, two big left hands upstairs. Johnson keeps coming forward. Throws a right hand into Tarver's face, backs him into the corner. What Johnson has to do is be careful not to do what I uh, saw another fighter do against Tarver, which is think that he's tired and hurt, and he'll sneak a good left hand on him. Like that. Tarver can back into position to extend his arms and get punching room. He's been very effective. When Johnson manages to get right up on top of Tarver, he's been effective. Well, already welts under the eyes of Johnson, who's being raped with cleaner punches. There's a big left hand from Antonio Tarver, one of his best punches in the fight so far. And Tarver's nose is bleeding already too, so. Roy, if you were to fight again, which of the two would you prefer to fight? I wouldn't care. It don't really matter when it comes to me. Now, I just love to fight. I don't have a, a 
specific person I be wanting to fight, I whoop all of them. I don't care. So then the winner. <laughs> if, <laughs> if I told you to fight again, like, but I don't see enough really like here that. to threaten to bring me out of retirement, so I'm cool well, man. Good. Good by us. We like where you are. Johnson trying to stay active here in round three, as Larry Merchant pointed out. Tarver is beginning to do some damage to Johnson's face. Good body shot by Glenn Johnson. Has to walk through some punishment to do what he wants to do, but you can't question the tenacity and the bravery of Johnson as he hammers Tarver with a right hand, and Antonio keeps walking back to try to get punching room. Yeah, he's going to keep the pressure on because that's his only chance this fight. He can't stay outside and fight Tarver because Tarver's long arm, Tarver's 60, so he has to walk Tarver down. Listen for the bell, fellas, listen for the bell. Tarver doing an excellent job to the body. Pretty good round for Antonio Tarver, who found plenty of opportunities to counter and landed accurately. Listen to me. You're looking for the one punch. Stop looking for the let it flow natural, Antonio. Listen, you got to crack his body some more. You're not going to too much head hunting. You're trying too hard. Relax, baby. Hey, stop trying so hard, man. Okay? Stand your ground a little more now. Okay? Round four. Okay, you go drink it. Drink that. Okay, you Keep walking them down. Stick them to the body. We got this. <clears throat> Take your shot. All right. All right, cut them loose. That's enough. Start cutting them loose, Tony. All right, Mark. Good work, kid. Nice and relaxed. He's, gone. He's done. The body work's doing it, kid. Stay on that body. That's all it is. Because Stay of on that the... Body. Hockey strike. We have a light heavyweight championship here in Los Angeles between two fighters from Florida. <laughs> Ain't that funny? Tarver's a big fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. Two rounds to one. 29, 28, Antonio the Magic Man Tarver. Jim, I'll tell you something. I like the good boxer. Tarver's boxing a good fight. Uses that right hand beautifully for Southpaw. He backs up. He catches Glenn Johnson with a good right, uh, right uppercut, right hook, right jab. Johnson's still the aggressive just like you see now. But Tarver won rounds two or three with his boxing. Tarver threw 97 punches by CompuBox count in the third round, Roy. We know Glenn Johnson can fight at a fast pace for a long time. Can Antonio? I don't know, he didn't put a lot of effort in those punches he throws, so they didn't take a lot out of him. If he throw him like that, he probably can last for a little while. Johnson busting Tarver backward. Trying to punch right through Tarver's guard, and the body punch is landed. Now, this is the fight Johnson wants. He just can't sit still with Tarver because Tarver's just looking for one big open. You hear Buddy McGill tell Tarver, quit looking for one punch, put punches together. He realized that Tarver's really making a mistake here. Look for one shot, but that's I, not I still don't think spot. Antonio's doing what Buddy was looking for. No, he's not, because Buddy told him to work the body and quit looking for one punch. He may be resting a little bit, boy. No, he's looking for, he playing possum. He's looking for one big shot. Well, one big shot is not going to do it to this guy from, from his record. As I said, 52 previous fights. Johnson's never been KO'd. He was TKO'd by Bernard Hopkins. When he says shut down everything he tried to do, there's a hard left hand by Tarver, best punch of the round, followed by another one. It had been Johnson's round up to that moment. Good hard left hand body shot by Tarver. Just misses the uppercut. Johnson starts to throw again. You know, it's the old football saying, take what they give you. Oh, I gotta and stop. Tarver sees no openings downstairs and goes for it. Free up those hands. Free them up. You don't need me. Stop. Break. Step back. Watch your heads. First minute of the round definitely belonged to Glenn Johnson. Tarver seemed to turn it around toward the end of the second minute of the round. Third minute of the round has been Tarver backing up and generally finding his opportunities to land. Now he's just trying to win the round with short punches, Jim. You know? And that's what he should have done earlier. Throwing the short punches and keep Glenn busy. And because he just tries to land, he finally gets a chance to land something exactly. hard. Exactly. That's what he should do the whole time. Big left hand to punctuate the round. 
by Antonio Tarver. And Johnson looks a little weary as he goes back to his corner. And, and Tarver's rally may have stolen the round. If you take a break, that's what happens. You got to stay busy. You got to stay busy. Huh? It's all right. It's good. He shot anyways. You're going to get that shot you're looking for. You're going to get that shot you're looking for, but you got to stay to the body. Good. You're doing good. Okay, rinse and spit out. Don't take it. Stay to the body, baby. You got to stay to the body. You know what? You... Okay. I'm fine. How are we doing? Join him. Make sure we don't get those head buttons. Okay. Go, go, go. Now you fight like a champ. Okay, baby? Now you fight like a champ. He see Grant Johnson with a beautiful left hook to the body, one of his best punches, and definitely his best body shot of that round. Round four was a seesaw round. Twelve of Antonio Tarver's 26 connected punches came in the final minute of the round. That was after Johnson seemed to have seized the initiative at the beginning of the round. Letterman gives it to Antonio Tarver and round five begins. See if Johnson's any the worse for wear from that big left hand that ended the round for Tarver in round four. Johnson's virtually fighting in an old peekaboo style offense trying to defend his head from Tarver's shots. Johnson, as Tarver momentarily dropped his hands, and Johnson got a free shot. <laughs> Tarver just trying to rest the game, want to wait to the end of the round, tell Peter Pettis to get around. He's fighting a small fight against Brian Johnson. Low balling the jab twice. Now he throws a hard jab and follows it up with a left hand. Good oh, uppercut lands Johnson. for Johnson, followed by a good body shot. Hard right hand for Johnson. Comes back with a body shot. Johnson thinks he's hurt Tarver. I don't think he's holding fair Carlson, but that was a good shot by Johnson. Tarver looks hurt. If he isn't, he's getting a good imitation of somebody oh, he's who's hurt. He's just fair Carlson. He's really a little tired. He's very fast like this is some guys with a left on You're exactly right. And Johnson's figured it out. He himself realized that Tarver wasn't hurt. Uppercut from Tarver. Now let's see if Johnson can seal the deal in this round. Once again, he sees the initiative. In the last round, he seemed to allow it to slip away. Well, his thing is he's going to wear Tarver down, then try to catch up and, and catch with a good shot. He's not trying to knock out one punch right now. That's not his fight. Tarver landed one good shot. Johnson came back with a couple. Have we had a clinch in this fight? Nope. Double left hook from Glenn Johnson. It's been a very active round from Johnson. He's expended a great deal of energy. All right, I got to stop punching. Step back. One step. Let's go. Listen for that bell. Johnson's going to wind up throwing more than 80 punches in the round output for him and seems to kind of limp back to his corner hey it's simple baby it's simple it's simple give me the water all right catch your breath nice and relaxed hey it's simple that's the key right there jab just jab 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 knocks them. him back and sets everything up g-man you got this kid you see where he's ready to go blood you see how he's ready to go that's man don't have to be hard you good and listen, don't have to be hard shots, okay? Come on, baby. Let your hands go, dog. You work too hard for this, baby. You got to bite down and let them hands go. Hey. He see Glenn Johnson come with a jab to the body and follow with a right upper cup. Boom, a beautiful right upper cup right on the chin, chin of Antonio Tarver. Then he comes back and pins him against the with a left hook to the head and a right body shot, which was a beautiful right body shot. Well, if Johnson had big punching power, he could have hurt Tarver with that uppercut. 
And that's part of why Antonio played possum <laughs> and gave him the impression that he had. Thanks, coach. Keep me dry. Keep me dry in that corner. Tyler. Johnson threw more than twice as many punches as Tarver in that round by copy box count. There's a good hard left hand from Antonio. Larry? Well, Tarver came out in the stance that said, I'm going to try to get you earlier in this round. I'm not going to let you get rolling. But he is in with one tough ombre. All right, let it go, let it go. Watch that hand. Step back. Break. Now go. Oh, hold that head, Glenn. Don't hold that head. All right, let's take a look. Wait a minute for a second. Time. Accidental head butt. And a cut on that left Pat eye. Russell sees a cut over the left eye of Let's Glenn go. Johnson. Well, anytime there's a cut like that, it becomes more imperative to start winning the rounds. <laughs> it was a cut against Bernard Hopkins in 97 that led to the one TKO loss of Glenn Johnson's career. If there's a cut there as the result of this butt, it sure isn't a big one because we haven't been able to spot it with the naked eye so far. Good hard left hand by Tarver. There it is, the cut's on the outside of the left eye. Good straight left hand by Tarver there, behind the jet. Since the headbutt, since the appearance of blood on the face of Glenn, of Glenn Croft Johnson, Antonio Tarver has become much more aggressive. Firing combinations, landing an uppercut. Knocking Johnson back with a hard left hand. And that won't bother Johnson. Johnson will just keep coming, trust me. But it will win the round for Tarver. Yep. Who lost the last one. And seems to have the advantage here. Tarver able to block Johnson's lead right hand. Johnson keeps following the puncher around. It's a dangerous thing to do. It's what he has to do to win the fight. Good hard uppercut by Johnson. Good straight left hand by Tarver. Johnson's going the only thing that he can do, which is come forward, put pressure, put pressure. That's the only chance he has to win this fight. And he knows that he's not going to stop coming. Tarver walking side to side. Again, trying to create distance. Make punch and win. Johnson once again tries to jump in on top of it. Step all the way back. Let's go. Now go. Stop at the bell, fellas. Stop at the bell. Tarver scoring with one last solid left hand to underline his having won the round. Right, give me some water. Put the bucket in front of him. All right, good work. No worries. No worries, champ. No work. A little bit of pressure. Yeah. Caused by a butt. Yep. Coach, yeah, how are we doing? Yeah. That's good. That's it's fine. It's fine. It's we nothing. Got it. we Buddy, got it. I give me a quick yeah, look. Yeah, it's nothing. We got take it. a quick look. That's it's nothing. No all right. Listen, hey, Glenn, Glenn, it's all good. But you got to outwork this guy, Glenn. You can't let him out. You can't let him outwork. You see the left and the right come together. Glenn's jab up behind Tarver's head and their heads come together and they collided. A bad cut over Glenn's eyes. Not bad, but it's in a bad place because it will lead right down into his eye. He's, what he does is he, he doesn't do a, a defensive mode when you fire more than one. All right? Start firing multiples. Multiple shots. All right, let's go. Cut man in Glenn Johnson's corner is his manager, Mark Fast. We'll see what happens as they go along treating the cut into round seven of a scheduled 12 in the fifth round or in the sixth round 28 of Antonio Tarver's 33 connects for power shots Harold how do you have it so far okay Jim 20 uh, 58 56 four rounds to two Antonio to match Glenn Tarver Jim the rule on that cut is this since it's beyond the fourth round and the cut was caused by an accidental headbutt if this fight gets stopped because, because that cut gets made bigger by clean legal blows we go to the scorecards Well, we've seen Tarver for months and months on television, glib, funny, uh, promoting himself, 
Jay Leno and so on. But boy, out here, it's just a fight. <laughs> None of that wins you this fight. <laughs> Pretty doggone good fight. A very good fight. A lot of punch, a lot of action. Nobody laying down, nobody laying around. They're both fighting a good fight. You love to see this type of activity. Johnson's advantage is his constant, sustained energy and his will to come inside, pass Tarver's jab. Tarver is the harder hitter and has been able sometimes to move Johnson with his punches. And Johnson walking straight in right now, he better be very careful because he's got to be surprised sometime he's soon. And Tarver trying to counter Johnson's right hand with the left, just misses. Johnson's head is straight up in the air, his hands not in a defensive mode right now, so he's in a dangerous place. Yeah, and, and Johnson seems to be pushing his punches now, Roy, for some reason. I don't know if that's fatigue or... Yeah, that's fatigue. Now Tarver catches a couple of hard shots from Johnson as Glenn goes back to throwing harder. Tarver whacks him through the guard with the left hand, lands another straight left hand. Blood has not flowed in the round. So Mark Faz's first effort to stop Glenn Johnson's cut has for the moment worked perfectly. I haven't heard a fighter grunting so much with each punch since Joe Frazier. It means he's getting a little tired here. Oh, big left hand shot by Tarver. Johnson's got a heck of a beard. He walks right through it. <laughs> Stop the bell. Stop that bell, fellas. We are in the middle of a technical revolution in sports television. The advent of high definition. High definition television will very shortly become the norm for all major sports events in the United States. You saw high def at the Olympics this summer. You're watching it on HBO. We got everything under control. Listen, the one twos are working all day. Now change up. Now double up on the Give me a quick look. Give me a quick look. Good. Listen, now change it up. Now double up on the jab. Double up on the jab, they shoot the right hand. And you're gonna catch him. You can lay him out this round. If you double up on the jab, you shoot the right hand. That's it, something. Do not sit there and let him keep punching him. Take it out. Take it out. You let the guy walk in too much. You gotta work the jab, okay? And give me some left hands to the body, please. You're not doing that. Okay? You're not throwing no body. Star studded crowd on hand here at Staples Happy. Center. Kobe and Vanessa Bryant, Mike Tyson. Variety of other big LA names all within range of ringside. Glenn Johnson and Antonio Tarver into the eighth round of their scheduled 12. Give me a big right. The two men were fighting for supremacy in the light heavyweight division after both having scored upset wins by knockout over Roy Jones earlier this year. We invited you to tune in, or I should say to log on to www.hbo.com slash boxing to ask a question of our on-air commentators and here's one for you Roy if you were in Glenn Johnson's corner and right now he's doing pretty well what, did John, what advice would you pass along? Just tell him to keep on going forward, keep pressing and uh, keep his hands up because a lot of times he walks in with his hands down and if you were advising Antonio Tarver box and keep letting your hands go and he don't look better. for the one big shot he right? Does, he does a lot better when he lets his punches go Another hard left hand. Tarver has landed two solid left crosses in this round. Glenn Johnson keeps hacking away, but the more effective punches are landed by Tarver, and Johnson shows it when Tarver's able to connect. Good double left hook by Glenn Johnson. All effort fighting. He won't give you everything he's got, that's for sure. This is a really fierce fight. One of the best light heavyweight fights I can recall. Well, that left hand may have hurt Johnson. Garver has done a great job here in the eighth round of, as Roy Jones says, just letting his hands go. And it's been a huge round for Antonio Tarver, who's landed hard punches and who has started the blood flowing again. 
on Glenn Johnson's face. A minute to go in the round. Johnson continues to try to press the action. Antonio dances backward to get a little breather after throwing a lot of punches in the first two minutes of the round. Yeah, but the good thing is, all those punches take a lot out of Glenn Coffee Johnson, too. So Glenn needs a breather just as well. So he's not dealing with a fighter who's not tired. His opponent is just as tired as he is. It's been a fair amount of body punching in the fight, Roy. How do you feel tomorrow after a fight like this? Uh, sometimes you can be pretty sore. Your arms, the back of your head, everything. Not just a lot, for a couple of days. It reminds you that you're a fighter, huh? That's right. It reminds you what you do for a living. Johnson chasing and trying to come on again. Listen for that belt. Johnson threw 96 punches in the seventh round. Expended a lot of energy there. That round seemed more to belong to Tarver. Gotta pick it up. Gotta pick it up. Is that working you a little bit? Well, an early visit from Santa Claus to tell us that round nine is upcoming. This is Nikki Zeno of New York in the Santa outfit. 3,000 miles away from her original hometown. Taking advantage of the showbiz spotlight available to her here in Los Angeles. every round. Nikki Zeno. It's the truth. It's the truth. Okay, we gotta work. Stay low and then stay in the ground and work the body. Keep the jab out there. Show them what you made of now. Looking around, I noticed that uh, virtually all of the boxes. The repeteers are absolutely filled. <laughs> those, you know, those people have been promised any number of events for the season, including hockey, and uh, without any hockey, uh, they get to see a real fight, not a hockey fight. <laughs> Shopping right hand lands for Glenn Johnson there. In round eight, Tarver was 31 out of 78 by CompuBox numbers. Johnson, 17 out of 67. 20 of Tarver's connects for power shots. He reaches out with the right hand there and lands two solid lefts in succession. And unfazed Glenn Johnson comes back, keeps throwing with his right hand. One of the questions about Tice, uh, excuse me, about, about Tarver going into this fight was after fighting Roy Jones twice, the biggest fights of his life, fights that he'd been looking forward to for so many years, would he be ready for this kind of tough fight? Oh, he's ready for it. And, and he's shown something by being absolutely as good as he can be from what I could see, Roy. Yeah, he's shown he got to be ready because right now he still has to make money. This is the first time he got an opportunity to start making money. He can't lay short now because he has a family to feed. Well, he told that he had been in bankruptcy about a year ago. He's no longer in bankruptcy. And according to his advisors, another... Uh, fight or two like this one and uh, Take a break. he'll have an annuity for life. Boy, Antonio Tarver is taller than you are and has longer arms. What? But he doesn't have the blinding speed that you used to bedevil John Ruiz when you moved up and fought a heavyweight. No. Could Tarver fight heavyweights? Yeah, he fight heavyweights because of his height mainly. And the southpaw thing would help him. Yeah, it would help him a whole lot. Most heavyweights not accustomed to fighting against southpaws. That's one thing Michael Moore used to his advantage when he won the heavyweight crown. So you're talking about making money. That may be the number one way to make money if he can find the niche that he wants. Assuming that he's able to hold on to light heavyweight identity tonight. He'll hold on to it as long as he keeps boxing and moving like he's doing. He's fighting a very small fight right about now. I don't see Glenn Johnson catching up with him because he's fighting very small. He's staying away from Glenn Johnson. That's the best thing to do. All right, I got it. Step back. Don't hold him. Step back. Break. Now go. In the last couple of rounds, Tarver seems to have become a little more secure defensively. And perhaps that's because... Johnson is tiring and can't flurry for his extended period of time now. Exactly. He's very tired. He's not throwing nearly as many punches as he was earlier. 
He said that after he won a title and made some money, the candy tasted sweeter. Right now he's tasting sour balls. <laughs> 77, 76. Got to one up. Give me a mouthful. All right. Try a second, please. All right, you're good. You're good. You got to work him. Under left eye. Yeah, let me uh, give, give him a second. I got to get a little pressure on this, please. Mm -hmm. All right, listen, Glenn. You got to work this guy. You got to stay on him. Glenn is too close. They got him up, I think, one round. You hear me? Yeah. They got him up one round. Give it. I got to give it to us. You got to start taking it to him. What round is this? Take this. Take this. It's round 10, baby. Careful. Championship rounds, baby. And Tony, listen to me. Hold your listen to me. Baby. Listen to me. Look at me. We need these. Stay on your ground. Bite down. Don't back up. Don't Dress give up down nothing. The Dress down Don't the defense. Up. Don't pull up. And work. Okay. He see Tarver with a jab and a right left hand right over the right behind Glenn Johnson's straight left jab. Good counter punches. As long as he fights from outside like that, he'll do good. Roy, Tarver's trainer, Buddy McGirt. Tarver. Is gathering a huge reputation in the sport because of the successes he's enjoyed in the last couple of years. Usually with veteran fighters like Arturo Gatti, also Tarver. We'll talk more about it in a moment. Right now, let's see how Harold Letterman has the fight after nine rounds. Okay, Jim. 87, 84, six rounds to three, Antonio Tarver. Jim, he's very, very effective with that sharp left hand. Glenn Jackson, you know, he's the aggressor, but it's ineffective aggressiveness. He's getting in, he's just right not landing corner. the real right good the shots that Tarver's landing. Tarver getting the cleaner, harder shots with the left hand. So, Tarver, six rounds to three. My take, Roy, is that McGirt succeeds not by trying to change the fighters he's training, but by encouraging them to do what they want to do and building their confidence. What's your take? Exactly. Builds confidence with him. He makes them feel comfortable. Makes them feel like they have a chance again. It's easy to bring them back that way. He's been doing a wonderful job with it. You heard Buddy McGirt telling Antonio Tarver between rounds 9 and 10, you need these next three. Bite down. Yeah, Johnson's got away from throwing his right hand, too. That's been hurting him. Darvin looks a little tired right now. Yeah, he's taking a little break. You threw a lot of punches for the last round. We often see fighters clearly taking a break, getting some rest. I don't think I've ever heard a trainer say to a fighter, go in there and get a rest in this next round. This is a decision the fighter always makes on his own. Right? Yeah, you have to because the trainer's not in there uh, fighting those rounds. He don't know how tired the fighter is. He's just telling them what to do. It's easy to tell a horse to run fast, but do you know how much energy it takes for him to run that fast? Seems to sense that Tarver wants to take a rest here and is trying to take advantage of it. But Tarver has been effective in staying away and sticking out the back just often enough to move Johnson off. Larry, we have a ringside request online. And uh, one of our viewers wants to know how you have the fight scored so far. I have uh, Tarver ahead seven rounds to two, but he's losing this round. So or at least far. he was <laughs> until that particular moment. And that was a good combination by Tarver here. Has been mostly Johnson's round, and now he lands a hard right hand of his own to balance the left hand that Tarver landed. So while Buddy McGirt wanted Antonio Tarver to focus on winning the last three rounds in the fight, Tarver decided he wanted to take round off and get a little bit of a rest. And that will tighten things up on the scorecards. Now Glenn Johnson's doing just what Tarver was doing earlier. He's trying to knock out one punch. Surely thinking that he's behind in the fight. Stop the bell. But just as it was a bad idea for Tarver to try to knock out Johnson with one punch, it's probably a bad idea for Johnson to try to do that too. Just as bad. Listen to me. If you listen, we win the fight. If you listen, you gave me good work, baby. All we got to win this is two more rounds, one at a time. After you give me three of the best minutes in your life, you come back to me and I'll bring you back. All right, Glenn? You hear me? Nice and relaxed. All right. Cover him. Calm him up a little bit. Put a towel on him. He's cold. All right. Nice and relaxed. Put a towel on his back. Okay. Listen to me, Glenn. We need these last. Listen to me, champion. Listen to me. Go back to the jab. We, listen to me. We need meaningful jabs. Meaningful punches. Okay? You said you work. those towels when you're done here. Make okay. sure you said you work hard for this, baby. Give me that towel. You worked hard for this. 
Let me see. 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 Let me Dogger breathing hard in his corner, trying to maximize his oxygen uptake, getting ready for rounds 11 and 12. Glenn Johnson with a little bit of a lift after Tarver basically took the 10th off, landing only 10 punches, his lowest connect number since the first round. Now they get ready to go back to grappling with each other. Tarver, the taller, longer boxer, seemed in the early rounds very conscious of trying to score a knockout over Johnson. Somewhere in the middle rounds, Antonio seemed to gather that he wasn't going to knock Glenn Johnson out with any one or two good shots. And through most of the late rounds, he has boxed, let his hands go, and scored heavily. But now Glenn Johnson is coming back in the fight, and Tarver tries to stop the bleeding with one big left hand. Yeah, that hurt Glenn Johnson, I think. The old stepped him back. He went back, but he is tremendously resilient. This is a guy who's been a construction worker to support his career in boxing, and he puts in a full day's work. <laughs> what an irony it would be if the two guys who made their reputations by beating the great Roy Jones fought to a draw. <laughs> Johnson just won't go away. And now he gets a burst of energy and starts to fire combinations again. And Tarver tries to come on and apply some energy himself. Good hard left hand by Tarver. Johnson leans forward and tries to fire a right. Tarver with a counter right as he backs away. Just a little pop. Johnson's punch partially blocked. Tarver missing twice with the left hand in close. Hard right, right hand by Johnson. It's a close round. Fight is heating up in the 11th. There was no punch contact. Some of the crowd wanted that to be ruled a knockdown, but it wasn't. All right, hand by Johnson. Best by the best punch of the fight for Johnson, I think. Seizing the initiative here in the 11th, Barber pops him with the left, Johnson walks through it and comes off. The crowd is very excited as they think Glenn Johnson has won the 11th round to tighten this fight up. All right. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right, listen to you. You got to knock him out, Antonio. Round listen five. to me. Round Antonio, round Antonio listen to me. When you're done punching, he's coming right back. You cannot stop. Come on, take a deep breath. Hold him, Sam. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. It's the other one. He's good. Glenn, give me the best shot of your life. He's got it. He's got listen, it. he's got us on volume. What he's doing is this shit, pity pad. You got a pity pad with him, but put it on him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, when you punch too hard, baby. When you punch, when you punch him, he's coming right back. Hold the ground, baby. Stand the ground. Glenn Key is coming out. The winner of this round Here's is the, the drama. After some great work in round seven, eight, and nine, Antonio Tarver appeared to think that he had Glenn Johnson right in his hip pocket. And he seemed to relax in the tent. But he may pay as now Johnson has hauled himself out of Tarver's pocket with big rounds in the 10th and the 11th. And maybe the fight, maybe the fight is on the table in the 12th. Yeah, you have to commit both guys. Both guys have fought an excellent fight tonight. They put out a lot of punches. It's been a great fight for the fans. I mean, nobody ducked around or tried to dodge anything. They fought a beautiful fight tonight. They're going to wind up throwing more than 800 punches apiece, which in a light heavyweight fight is a ton of leather. They're both going to land more than 200 punches. They've done well. And reaching with the right hand to the body. Tarver wants to try to get in one or two good straight left hands. Set him up with the jab. 
There's one. And Johnson grabs and holds. Well, uh, that looked like a Buffalo Johnson momentarily. There's another one. And indeed, Johnson seems to be wiggling under the left hand to Sook. Another big left hand for Tarver. Johnson is under the gun now. Tarver showing another side of himself. He's been the boxer, and he's come out here to brawl, to make sure he wins this fight. Now, here's the problem for Tarver. When does his energy level run out? And when does Johnson try to come off? Another huge left hand for Tarver. That would really hurt Johnson. But look at Glenn Johnson hang in. But Tarver got put pause on all day like this. This is his fight. This type of fight he likes to fight. Make it look like he's tired of the air throw. Big shot and try to catch him. That's how he knocked Eric Harden out the second time. Johnson's trying to do with the right hand what Tarver's been doing to him with the left. But Antonio scored so heavily in the first minute and a half of the round that he now has the advantage. However, you can see the exhaustion now as Tarver wobbles backward. Unless he's playing possum again. He's playing possum. You know these guys. Yeah, I know him very well. I watch him all the time. He's playing possum. That's how he plays. I mean, he's a little tired. Don't get me wrong, but he's made to play a possum wobbling back. He, he, he wants to go Johnson into taking right. another one of those legs. Right, he wants Johnson to relax and think his old whip. And relax so he can run off the hand. Wood is falling in behind Glenn Johnson. They're rooting for him, or so it seems. Neither of these guys left a thing in the dressing room, in the gym, out of the ropes. They put it all out here tonight. They justified the idea that this was the biggest light heavyweight fight in the world. And it should have been made. I think Tarver stumbled because Johnson was on his foot. Yeah. No, Johnson stumbled because he's on Tarver's foot. A great action fight. Outstanding. Both fighters made their statements. Johnson's corner picks him up. And Tarver's corner picks him up, too. You know, historically, unless the light heavyweight division has had a star, it's never been a popular division. And somebody's going to come out of this fight as a fighter the public wants to see again. Well, you know, as the heavyweight size parameters move up, we see 240 and 250 pound heavyweight fighters. 175 is now the middleweight division, really. <laughs> Pretty much. Roy Jones, a classic middleweight, spent much of his career in the light heavyweight division because athletes are bigger now. Yes, they are. Let's take a look at the three judges who will have to try to choose a winner between Glenn Johnson and Antonio Tarver, California veteran Marty Denkin. Had Klitschko well ahead of Sanders, everybody else did too. Veteran Chuck Champ out of Vegas, you've seen him many times, one of the most respected judges in the sport. Scored the second Barrera fight, 116-112 over Morales, and Barrera was the official winner of the fight. And Melvina Lathan scored per Galata a draw. The fight was a draw because of her scorecard. She's also been involved in a lot of big fights. One from California, one from Nevada, one from New York. What do you think, Roy? Do you think uh, Tarver held on and won the fight? Yeah, I think he pulled it out. I think he uh, held on. He threw, threw a lot of good jabs. Um, I just thought he, did a good, he fought a good fight, he fought a good uh, defensive type fight, and I think he did enough to put it out. So you saw Harold Letterman score, which was 115-113. Tarver, let's go to Michael Buffer now and officially find out who won the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, when the winner is announced, he will be recognized by the IBO and fans and pundits around the world as the true light heavyweight champion of the world. We go to the scorecards. Marty Dakin scores it 116 to 112 for Tarver. Melvina Lathan scores it 115, 113 for Johnson. Chuck Jappa scores the bout, 
115, 113 to the winner by split decision. He is the Road Warrior, Glenn Johnson. Vinces the judges with his energy and his commitment that he was the winner in the fight. <laughs> Well, you know, what can you say? The crowd wanted Johnson. And two out of three judges score the fight for Johnson. Melvina Lathan and Chuck Ciampa both choosing the Road Warrior as he is now nicknamed over Antonio Tarver. Congratulations, Glenn. What won the fight for you? Heart and hard work, determination. Just know that I have to go in there and work no matter what the cost and just keep working. It's been a long road. I've been working very hard to get here, and I'm finally here. I hope I'm appreciated. Did he hurt you at any time? No, he never hurt me. Not me off balance because I didn't have my legs up under me, but nothing hurt me. You said when we spoke the last time, I may not be the best. I'm not the best, but I'm willing to fight the best. Are you willing to say now that you're the best? No. I'm still not the best. Looking for Mr. Best. <laughs> yeah. This was such a, a good action fight, such a close decision. Would you want to do a rematch? Definitely. Antonio Tava is a great fighter. And, you know, he, he, he surprised me. I didn't expect him to fight as well as he did. But he, that he, he proved that he's a true champion. And um, he did the work. And I came out and I did the work. And uh, I am... Um, I pull out a, a, a close decision, which is surprising for me because that never happened for me. But Orlando Cuellar, my trainer, and I have been working very hard in the gym, and um, we got here. I just want to send a shout out to all the Jamaicans throughout the world and the people back in Miami for supporting me. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, Antonio, did you think you won the fight? Of course. You know, it's always been all or nothing with me. Uh, I go to the cards and can't seem to get a fair shake. I, I got to knock everybody out, and uh, you know, I'm not one to make excuses. Glenn fought a gallant fight tonight, but I showed the true heart of a champion. I got down, I hurt him in the last round. I thought I had enough to to pull it out, but you know, that's the scorecard for you. Was he tougher, able to take your punch uh, better than you anticipated? Of course not. I mean, I'm not going to say a guy can't take my punch until he's out, but I hit him with some good hard shots. I hurt my left hand. I don't know. I got to get an x-ray on it early in the fight so you know I wasn't able to utilize it as well as I would have normally but you know that I thought I did enough to win the round the fight and uh, you know what can I say well, let's see that left hand here what wh where do you when did you hurt it uh, I guess around about the fourth fifth round I caught him with a good shot straight on the top of the forehead and uh, I mean it's it just excruciating pain throughout but you know that's not it you know I fought my fight I boxed him I moved I showed great defense and, uh, but he was a gutty fighter, and uh, you know, what can he, I say? He said he'd want to fight you again in a rematch. This was such a good fight. Do you want the rematch? Of course I want the rematch. You know, uh, I don't know. I mean, I thought I did enough to win the fight. I dictate the pace. He came strong as I thought he would, but when he came, he didn't get anything. You know, I, I was dressed down in defense. I mean, he hit me with some good shots, but it never hurt me. I mean, I thought I won the fight. Thank you, Antonio. Jim?